Hey, you guys remember Joe Biden? He used to be running for re-election for president this year, and he's not doing that anymore, but he, he's still supposed to be the president. But no one seems to hear from him or about him at all anymore. He is apparently at his private home in Delaware again right now. And while some members of the Democrat establishment are still trying to make excuses for his obvious demonstration of dementia in that debate five weeks ago, even the liberal press are not having it anymore. You want to show people what's in your heart. You don't have to memorize anything. You don't have to have days of prepping. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him, I thought, in my view, overprepped, not not a good idea. Did you think that that was all that was going on? I mean, the, the president has not had a full cabinet meeting since last October. <laughs> I love yeah, no, that that bad debate he had. I th he was just overprepped. He studied too hard. What's my greatest weakness, employer? Uh, I just care too much. I work too hard. And uh, Jake Tapper there goes, yeah. So um, that was all that was going on, though. He was over prepared because he he hasn't had a cabinet meeting since um October. <laughs> so uh where is he? Is he the she goes on. There are people, Democrats that I've talked to who think that obviously he's not able to communicate the way he used to be able to communicate. And they think that people in the White House were hiding this from senior Democrats like yourself, keeping him keeping a, a close control over who got to see him. I think this president is, a, I mean, he is a consequential president. Of course. In his term in office, he has accomplished great things, as we talk about. Yesterday. How do you think history is going to remember his decision to not run for re-election? He's consequential. Let's put it that way, Jake. He's obviously not consequential. He's no longer even visible. I mentioned yesterday on the show that we are easily distracted in this tumultuous news cycle. So I'm just going to raise uh, another one of these questions. Yesterday, I said, hey, you guys remember when Trump almost had his head blown off and the news has just totally pushed that out of the cycle and you're not seeing headlines about it anywhere? And well, Okay, I'm going to raise another one of those questions. Who is currently the president? I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Welcome back to the show. Joe Rogan has made his presidential endorsement, and we'll get to who that is in just a moment. First, though, the yes or no game is wildly popular in the Daily Wire shop. We recently released a new expansion pack. You remember last year, we released the conspiracy expansion pack. It sold out very quickly. I am thrilled to share that we have a new one, the Politics, Philosophy, and Religion Yes or No Expansion Pack. As a tease, I thought I would play some of the cards from the new deck. Except I don't have the new deck. Where's the new deck? This is what happens. Mr. Davies doesn't show up. I'm supposed to play the game with Professor Jacob, and there are no cards. So sorry, Professor Jacob. I'm not going to hear anything that you believe about religion. Though I, I'm pretty sure we've had enough religious conversations. I think I probably know. You can play with your friends and family up to nine people at once. Put your knowledge of your friends and family to the test. Dailywire.com slash shop. Get yes or no the game. And while you're there, be sure to pick up the new politics, philosophy, and religion expansion pack. Joe Biden has just disappeared. We got to open our eyes to this. We got to we got to see the light here on these sorts of issues. And when you want to open up your home to light, you got to check out Three Day Blinds. Go to the number three dayblinds.com slash Knowles. There is a better way to buy blinds, shades, shutters, and drapery. It's called Three Day Blinds. They are the leading manufacturer of custom window treatments in the U.S. Right now, they're running a buy one, get one 50% off deal. You can shop for almost anything online these days. Why not shop for blinds, too? I absolutely adore Three Day Blinds. It has been in business for over 45 years. It has local professionally trained design consultants who have an average of 10 plus years of experience. I love Three Day Blinds because... One, blinds, shutters, 
windows really matter to your home. It, it's where the light comes in, you know? It's good. It really affects the ambiance, but it's something that I never really think about. I can't, you know, most guys I think don't really think about. And you just want it to be simple, effective, efficient, reasonably priced. Right now you can get Three-day blinds, buy one, get one 50% off deal on custom blinds, shades, shutters, and drapery for a free, no-charge obligation consultation. Head to 3dayblinds.com slash Knowles. Buy one, get one 50% off when you head to 3, number 3, dayblinds.com slash Knowles. Number 3, D-A-Y blinds.com slash Knowles. Speaking of the left cheering on the diminishment of white people, there is an actress, I am told, Jenna Ortega, I'd heard the name, couldn't pick her out of a lineup, but Jenna Ortega has gone viral for giving an interview to Vanity Fair in which she mocks white men. The show that I do right now, I have to play the cello and I don't play the cello and I want it to look real so that cellists don't look at it and call me mean names. My teacher told me that as long as I looked confident in my movements and I was strong and stoic and, you know, fully embodied the character that it would be fine. And she told me that I just needed to um, approach everything I do in life with the confidence of the average white man. And that changed my life. I feel better. I was nervous to even do this because I ramble like crazy. So I was like, man, what am I gonna talk about for all this time? And then I just remembered, how would an average white man do this? And he probably would have shown up with mismatched socks. Okay, so you, you, there at the end, you get a little bit of the, the mockery. So I, I see why people are offended by what she says. She's saying, oh, these white guys, you know, they're so incompetent. They don't, they're careless. They'd show up in mismatched socks. What does he care? But the first part, I actually don't really see why people are offended about this. She says, yeah, some really good advice I got was to emulate the average white guy. I think oh, as a... As a white fella myself, a little, you know, a little swarthy, a child of the mezzogiorno. But I thought, okay, well, that's, yeah, white guys are, average white guys are pretty good at stuff, right? I'm not saying, I mean, other people are good at stuff too. But yeah, white, the average white guy, yeah, he's pretty, he's actually not a bad fella. I sort of like average white guys. So sure, you want to, you want to emulate an average white guy? Great. It's good to be confident. She's saying average white guys are more confident than other people. I'm not quite so sure about that. Actually, I, I think probably Jenna Ortega is not aware of how right her words are. Because it, what she's suggesting is uh, white guys have this unearned sense of confidence. They're so entitled. They get whatever they want. It's easy for white guys, but it's really difficult for everyone else white women, and then especially women of color and men of color and they-thems of whatever various shade she's imagining. But ironically, in the age of DEI, the opposite is true. In the age of affirmative action, the opposite is true. In, in the age of uh, disadvantaging white guys in hiring in college admissions, well, if a white guy gets into a, an elite institution, be it a school or a place of employment, that means he he really earned it. He really, really earned it because he overcame all of the handicaps and disadvantages that are in place by law and by culture. This is not, this is not uh, some conspiracy theory or something like that. There are laws on the books and there are practices that institutions have owned up to to disadvantage white guys in college admissions and employment in any place in society. White people are the only people that you can discriminate against by law and by culture. You can also discriminate against Asians by law. So maybe she should have the confidence of the average Asian, you know, Asian immigrant who works his way up to Harvard and then gets a job engineering or something. But, but the, the reason the white, the white people in particular uh, have, have this disadvantage in DEI culture is they're the group that you can, dis, uh, that you can discriminate against by law and by culture. That, that's the only group that you are uh, sanctioned by the culture and encouraged by the culture, actually, to insult and diminish and attack, as we see in Jenna Ortega's comments here. So the reason I wouldn't be offended by it is I think it's actually pretty good advice. Yeah. Have the, yeah, have the confidence of the average white guy. That's good. I'm glad it changed Jenna Ortega's life. Maybe it could change a lot of other libs' lives, too. There is at least one guy who is overconfident. There is one guy, one white guy in America who has way more confidence than he should. That, of course, would be Tim Walls. 
the running mate for Kamala Harris. Tim Walls is under attack right now uh, because people are learning who he is, and that is inviting a lot of attacks because he's done many disreputable and bizarre and dishonorable things in his life. So people pointed out he uh, his big achievement as governor of Minnesota was putting tampons in the bathrooms of fourth grade boys in public schools. That's a little weird. Although the Democrats are embracing it. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, we know his other big achievement was letting Minneapolis burn down on his watch and frankly, seeming to encourage it half the time. And uh, then we know one of his big accomplishments is that he he served in the military for 24 years and he deployed, he carried guns in war and he was a, re- he's now a retired command sergeant major, uh, except that we found out a lot of that is just complete bunk. A lot of that is actually stolen valor. And we now have proof of that from the Harris-Walls campaign. The Harris-Walls campaign has altered its website's bio of Tim Walls, removing its reference to him as a retired command sergeant major. He is not a retired command sergeant major. Despite embracing that title, uh, it's it's fake. He, he once served at the command sergeant major rank, as Politico reports, but he actually didn't fulfill the requirements to have that title. So uh, he he doesn't have that. Walls' official campaign bio now describes him as rising to the rank of command sergeant major, but doesn't mention his rank being reduced before retirement. This is a vulnerability. Okay, what you're going to hear from the libs is, oh, this is no big deal. This is outrageous. J.D. Vance is weird for some reason. I don't, but this is crazy. This is ridiculous. Republicans need to stop this line of attack. Well, it's clearly a vulnerability for them. If they're going to alter the Harris campaign website, they know this is a big deal and Republicans need to keep pushing on this. Okay. I, I, I in no way would diminish any anything about serving 20, 24 years in the National Guard. I think it's a little disreputable to, to, as Tim Waltz did, say that you will deploy to Iraq or you will deploy to the Middle East if your unit goes, and then to bail out as quickly as you can when it seems that your unit actually will go. I think it is disreputable to pretend that you retired at a higher rank than you did. I think it is disreputable to pretend that you carried weapons in a combat zone in war when you did not. I think stolen valor and fraud generally are quite disreputable things. Uh, But the Harris campaign obviously thinks this is a vulnerability. Okay. Uh, If if they did not, they wouldn't be stealth editing the website. Another major vulnerability for Kamala Harris comes from my friend, David Delayden, who runs the Center for Medical Progress, who you might remember this story from years ago at this point. Uh, David went undercover... takes a long time for the truth to come out. The truth is coming out now. We'll get to more on that in just one second. First, though, I've got to tell you about ExpressVPN. Go to expressvpn.com slash Knowles. Internet service providers can see every single website you visit. In the U.S., these providers are legally allowed to collect and sell that info to third parties, like advertisers. But who knows who else they might be selling it to? That is why I never use the internet without using ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes 100% of my traffic through secure encrypted servers so that no one can see my browsing history. It's none of their business. There are lots of other VPNs out there, but I choose to use ExpressVPN for a couple of reasons. One, the app is easy to use. All I have to do is open it and click one button to instantly connect my internet activity. Two, the app works on all devices, phone, laptop, tablet. No matter how I'm accessing the internet, ExpressVPN is working in the background. Three, It's number one rated by top tech reviewers like CNET and The Verge, people who know a lot more about this stuff than I do. Protect your online privacy today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Knowles, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Knowles. You get an extra three months free, expressvpn.com slash Knowles. My favorite comment yesterday is from Juliana Rose, 9149, who says, as a woman, I think it's just plain embarrassing to propose to your boyfriend. Okay, I caught a lot of flack yesterday. Got a lot of headlines. Got even women in the office were somewhat in dispute about this because that gal at the Olympics proposed to her boyfriend and I said, this is not how things are supposed to go. So I heard a response, which is that, well, you know, Michael, they had been dating reportedly for nine years and the boyfriend hadn't proposed. So she took matters into her own hands. And so really, Michael, that guy should have just man up, manned up and proposed. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not, 
yes, I'm sure he should have proposed or he should have dumped her or whatever. But the, the woman should not propose to the man because that is just not the sort of thing women do. That's not, that is not how marriages are supposed to work. That is, and we went through some of the reasons for this yesterday. But I have great sympathy for this woman, and I think the guy is a total loser. So, and now the world thinks the guy is a total loser because of how this whole thing went down. So, what what should the woman have done? Well, she should have dumped him either years ago, or if she didn't want to dump him, she should have done what my grandmother did to my grandfather. This was they didn't date for nine years. This was just a kind of usual thing that women would do back in the day. She would say, all right, listen, Buster, we've been dating for a little while now. And uh, please excuse my vulgar language, but these are the words of my grandmother. Piss or get off the pot. <laughs> and my grandfather proposed and they had six kids and they had a wonderful life and were married for 69 years. That's, uh, that, and they would, would have been married forever had he, had he lived longer. So uh, that's, that's what should have happened. But a woman proposing to a man on international television, but did she buy the man a ring? I don't no bueno, not the way it's supposed to be. David Delayden of the Center for Medical Progress is now coming out with even more footage, even more damning footage of Planned Parenthood attempting to purchase baby body parts illegally. Why is this only coming out now? Because Kamala Harris tried to cover up and they've been prosecuting this guy ever since he got the goods. David writes, he just posted this yesterday, in 2016, Kamala Harris seized dozens of hours of my unreleased undercover tapes. Now that this evidence is finally coming out for the first time, it's clear Kamala Harris led a cover-up of late-term abortion crimes as California Attorney General. She sent 11 armed agents to raid my apartment. Anyway, even though she knew, they, they all knew this was totally bogus, they seized all the undercover footage for Planned Parenthood. A state judge ruled years later that it was obviously filmed in public, so the footage was totally permissible, but the damage to me and my team was already done. This woman, we, we laugh at Kamala Harris because she's goofy and she doesn't seem to know very much, and she, she has a vocabulary of about 11 words, and, and most of her public speeches are just uncontrollable giggling, and we all view her as an empty suit, just as we viewed oh, Biden as an empty suit. Somehow, perhaps her suit is even more empty, if that were possible. But there's something really nefarious going on. There's something really dark about Kamala Harris. If she cares about any issue at all, there's, there's probably just one issue, and it is killing babies. She loves killing babies, and she will defend it to the death. And she has been complicit in persecuting a journalist for going out and proving on camera that a major organization that has received a lot of taxpayer money breaks the law in, in about as egregious and horrifying a way as is possible. She was complicit in that. And so years later, the truth comes to, to light. Okay, well, that's after this woman's been vice president. She's on the brink of becoming president of the United States. The damage has already been done. Planned Parenthood basically got away with it. Sure would be a shame, I guess, for the Harris campaign if these clips went viral. Speaking of complicity, Hillary Clinton is embracing the nickname that conservatives have given to Kamala's running mate, Tim Walls. Uh, conservatives have dubbed uh, Tim Walls because he was so insistent upon putting tampons uh, in the, the boys' bathroom at elementary schools. So Hillary writes, how nice of the Trump camp to help publicize Governor Tim Walls' compassionate and common sense policy of providing free menstrual products to students in Minnesota's public schools. Let's do this everywhere. Let's put tampons in the bathrooms of fourth grade boys everywhere in the country, says Hillary Clinton. Well, look, Hillary, I'm glad we agree. I'm glad we agree that it's a fair nickname. I was mentioning earlier in the week that the Democrats just completely made up this, this gross story about J.D. Vance. They, they said that J.D. Vance wrote in his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, that he did something with a, with a couch. And this went viral, not because it was a joke. There was no joke to it. There was no setup and punchline. It didn't really refer to, to anything that would seal the joke. It was just a lie. 
and it went viral because uh, many libs are illiterate, <laughs> functionally illiterate, and so they don't, uh, or practically illiterate, I, I suppose. So they don't, they didn't actually read the book. They just took this guy's word for it. It was, it was totally made up, and, and they ran with this story. Republicans are running with a story about Tim Walz that is demonstrably true. He uh, pushed a policy that put tampons in fourth grade boys' bathrooms in public schools. So the libs are running on a uh, accusation that's completely invented, completely fabricated. The Republicans are running on one that is true, so true that the Democrats are embracing it. Hillary Clinton's embracing it. I'm glad we agree. I don't want to lie about Tim Walls. Tim Walls lies about himself and his record, but I don't want to lie about Tim Walls. I don't want to lie about Kamala Harris. I don't want to lie about my political opposition. I want all of my attacks on the political opposition to be 100% precise and true. My, <laughs> my problem with them is that they're, that they're wrong and they have a terrible vision for the country. So I, I, I want to present their vision in, in honesty. It's very telling that the Libs attacks on Trump and J.D. Vance and all the other Republicans are based on lies. When, when Joe Biden comes out, he launched his whole presidential campaign in 2020 on how Trump uh, supposedly called Nazis fine people at Charlottesville, even PolitiFact, he, Snopes, Snopes it was, came out and said, no, that isn't true. They came out seven years later and said it isn't true. But, but they said it isn't true. The, the Libs attacks on conservatives are false. The conservatives' attacks on libs are true. Even if you're a lib, I think you have to kind of grant that, that fact. And that should tell you a lot about the respective camps. Now, speaking of fairness in the election, Kamala Harris has agreed to one debate with Donald Trump. You remember, Biden proposed two debates to Trump. Trump immediately accepted. Trump beat Biden so badly in the first debate that Biden is no longer the nominee. So then Kamala said, okay, well, I want to do that second debate. I, that, that's, you already agreed to it. And Trump said, hold on, I didn't agree to this. I agreed to debate the guy who was your nominee until I beat him so badly that now he's out of the race. So then Kamala said, oh, well, I want to do it. I want to do the debate on ABC, the, all these super libs, and let's get it done. And Trump said, okay, well, hold on. Now we have a new negotiation because we have a new nominee. So I propose three or four debates. I want one on Fox News, and I want one here, and I want one there. And Kamala won't do it. She's only agreeing to the one ABC debate. So it seems as though uh, Trump is going to do the ABC debate with Kamala, but Trump still wants these other debates in addition. So what's really going on here? I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier in the week or last week, that Trump should debate Kamala. She's not that good on her feet. Trump is considerably better on his feet than she is. And, uh, but I said, so why is Trump trying to, trying to avoid the ABC debate and he's pushing a Fox debate in this debate? I said, I think it's a negotiation. I think he's going to do the debate, but I think this is all a negotiation tactic. And it, it would appear that that was correct. And what was the negotiation? Is, it has, is Kamala going to do the Fox News debate? Uh, no, probably not. Maybe she will, but, but there's no evidence that she will right now. The negotiation was, the, the angle here for Trump was, he has reframed the debate issue. Biden had framed the debate issue as, I want to debate Trump, but he's going to be scared. Trump said, I accept your terms. Even though they're all beneficial to you, I'll accept your terms. Then Kamala reframed the debate issue. Trump's afraid to debate me, even though Trump never agreed to debate her. Now Trump has reframed it. Yeah, why won't Kamala do the extra debates? Why is Kamala running from the Fox debate and the NBC debate? Why is Kamala running away? So it's just a reframing of what the debate even means. I think it was well done, and I continue to hold that Trump should debate Kamala because he's better at it than she is, and because she's radical and people don't actually like her. That's why she got out of the 2020 presidential primaries before the first primary. Now, Speaking of the presidential race, Joe Rogan has just weighed in. He's made his endorsement in 2024. Is he going to endorse Biden? Or not Biden, Biden's out. Is he going to endorse Kamala? Is he going to endorse Trump? He is going to endorse Bobby Kennedy Jr. He's okay. He's doing the third party thing, RFK. That's it. I actually, I haven't heard the words out of uh, Joe Rogan's mouth. So I guess it's possible this is social media fake news, but this was being widely reported yesterday. And it would, it would make sense. Some are saying that this would be cynical. This way Joe gets to avoid uh, picking one of the two major parties. I don't know that. I mean, look, may, maybe there's a, a business 
calculation there. But I, I don't think it would be cynical. I think Bobby Kennedy is actually a pretty, pretty spot on in terms of Joe Rogan's politics. Joe Rogan is anti-establishment. He's anti, he was vicious on Biden. He liked some things about Bernie. He liked some things about Trump. And so I, I kind of get it. Bobby Kennedy is weirdly, even though he's a Kennedy, he's anti-establishment, but he is still liberal on many issues. Joe Rogan, I think, is liberal on, on a number of issues, but he's there's no way he's going to vote for Kamala. Probably he should he just, he should just vote for Trump. He's, he's clearly got a pretty good space in the Trump world. Uh, but I don't know. I'm not that, yeah, okay. I, I see why Bobby Kennedy would, would appeal to a voter like Joe Rogan. Now, ultimately, does that take votes away from Kamala or does that take votes away from Trump? I continue to maintain Bobby Kennedy, in as many votes as he will get, will take more votes from Kamala than he will from Trump. Do you remember our magnificent movie, What is a Woman? Well, the same guys got back together to ask America's next burning question, am I racist? Coming to theaters this September. Matt Walsh went undercover into the cesspool of DEI insanity, rubbed elbows with professional race hustlers and diversity con artists. Presale tickets go live on Thursday, August 15th. Get all the details. Watch the official trailer at amiracist.com. Finally, finally, we've arrived at my favorite time of the week when I get to hear from you in the mailbag. Our mailbag is sponsored by Pure Talk at puretalk.com slash Knowles, Canada, W-L-E-S. Take it away. Hi, Michael. Chris here, Huntington Beach. I'm listening to your rant about women's boxing. And I would just like to point out a couple things. I think they've been boxing a lot longer than two decades. I think it's more like the beginning of the century. A, women didn't get to vote until the 20s. Were we some sort of far-left, crazy, liberal, non-conservative if we wanted women to vote? And then, uh, you're, what about skateboarding? They've been skateboarding for, I don't know, 40 years. Maybe longer, I don't know. And it just got added to the Olympics. I think your logic's a little flawed here. I'd like to hear your rebuttal. In any case, pretty much everything else I agree with, and thank you for all you do. Very good series of questions. I will take them one at a time. Uh, yes, women have been boxing since the beginning of the century. This century, though. <laughs> the 21st century, not the 20th century. There, there were sporadic attempts in the 20th century to, to uh, institute women's boxing, uh, but they were snuffed out very quickly. In fact, in the UK, I forget the UK political leader who, as he was snuffing this out in the early 20th century, he said, you know, this is really weird. This is, I, I think, appealing to the interest for some perverse men. I'm paraphrasing. That's not verbatim. But no, it didn't, it didn't exist in anything even resembling uh, mainstream life until about 1998 in the UK, 1999, 2000. You start to see a little bit of this. And then, and then in the Olympics, not until 2012. So no, the women's boxing, other than a few sporadic attempts that were quickly extinguished, uh, it did not exist uh, until, until about 1998. Uh, and, and in the Olympics, not until just a dozen years ago. Um, but then you say, well, what about you know, women's voting? Now, we'll, we'll avoid uh, any debates that, that uh, any members of the audience want to have over the 19th Amendment. It's worth pointing out that there were many women who were opposed to the 19th Amendment uh, for, uh, for perfectly reasonable uh, uh, political concerns. Uh, however, women can vote in a way that women can't box because women do possess an intellect. Women, what is required for voting is judgment and intellect. Women possess that. What is required for boxing is brute strength. Women generally do not possess that. And what is required for boxing is uh, taking punches to the face. And, and I don't think it's ever appropriate for women to, to be punched in the face. So uh, I, I, that's why I think voting is different from uh, boxing. And then the final question. What was the final? Oh, skateboarding. Yeah. Skate, skateboarding is, uh, is like a very light, uh, easy pastime. I know you could do all sorts of tricks and everything, but, uh, you know, it's like surf. I think women can surf too. I think that's, I think women can play tennis. I think that's perfectly normal. And, uh, skateboarding, I guess, like voting doesn't involve women getting punched in the face, which is, which is different than, you know, a, uh, other sports are not 
are not the same as uh, full-on contact sports, especially boxing. So for those reasons, I think your refutations of my argument are ultimately unsatisfying. Next one. Hello, Mr. Knowles. First of all, I want to say thank you to you and the rest of the Daily Wire for helping me get through almost to the end of my high school experience, despite a radicalized, liberal, infiltrated experience and curriculum in the public school. I've been listening since I was in eighth grade, and I have a couple questions now as I am approaching my senior year. As someone that is interested in entering the field of philosophy, I am curious about the best ways to approach this, entering this field. Um, From your perspective, especially with all the modern issues, I am open to any ideas, but one option I have considered is attending my small local Catholic school, where there will be fewer leftist cult ideologies pushed throughout the curriculum and my overall life and values. Any wisdom is appreciated, Michael? Thank you. And okay. also tell Professor Jacob I said hi, too. Fair enough. Professor Jacob, he says hi. Uh, a really good question about philosophy. And I've got a very simple answer for you. Your teachers, broadly, are going to convince you that philosophy is something that dead men said. It's not. It's something that living people should do. You should approach philosophy not as something dead men said, but as something living people should do. You should view philosophy as a practical science. You should read philosophy, but then you need to implement the wisdom that you glean from philosophy in your own life. There's technical learning, there's practical learning. So it's one thing to read about the virtues. It's one thing to read Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. It's another thing to live a virtuous life. It's another thing to recognize that virtue is uh, rational activity done in an excellent way and then to, to implement that. It's one thing to read about magnanimity. It's another to cultivate greatness of soul. That's what you have to do. If you, if you approach philosophy as just some nerdy academic field in which you write a lot of papers, it's not going to be fruitful. If you approach philosophy as, as a love of wisdom and if you uh, approach philosophy as a way to improve your life, uh, then it will be worthwhile. Next question. Hi, Michael. It's the Shuckmeister. There's been a lot of talk about the situation surrounding Mr. Beast because of all the terrible things Chris Tyson did. Since then, people have been taking a closer look at how he does his charity videos and have noticed surprising methods of how they're conducted, gamified, and breaking FTC law. All of that's interesting, but I would love to hear your perspective on charity. Is what Mr. Beast is doing actually considered charity? It is a net positive that he brings water wells to Africa and pays for cataract surgery, and I think to an extent, public acts of charity inspire other people to give charity, but in his case, much of it is done with the knowledge that the revenue brought in will be greater than the revenue expensed, and those costs are often backfilled through very shady practices. I've been leaning into thinking it's not real charity after reading through Dante, when he has his very interesting discussion with St. John the Evangelist in Canto 26 of Paradiso. The blindness Dante has when discussing love for his other man and the divine seems to me like the purest definition of charity, Hmm. but what can we learn from this? I would love to hear your response. Thanks. Mr. Schuckmeister, wonderful take, and I agree with you. Uh, What Mr. Beast is doing can be good, you know, if he's going to go build wells for kids in the third world or something. That's really good. I'm I'm not discouraging it at all. And and from the perspective of those kids in the third world, it it probably feels like charity. And it's it's just as good as charity. And maybe it's better than charity in some cases because NGOs are often not efficient or effective. But from the perspective of Mr. Beast's soul, it is not the same thing as charity. His, Mr. Beast is doing business. And he's, he's he might be running a good business and he might be running a business that does good things. He's obviously running a, a, a powerful business that is good at, at doing business. He's got zillions of views and he's making lots of money. His business might well be doing good, but from the perspective of his soul, it, it's probably not fulfilling. Uh, it's probably not, uh, not helping him to grow in charity necessarily because he is personally benefiting from this. So it's not uh, a selfless giving. It's not um, a concern for the other for his own good, you know, willing the good of the other for his own good, absent any kind of personal or selfish desires. So, uh, you know, 
keep it going for the kids in the third world. That's great. But if Mr. Beast were to ask, how can I grow in charity? Yes. Uh, you would probably respond and say, well, you, you should do something else in addition to what you're doing. Next question. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for your show. I really appreciate what you bring to it, particularly as a Christian. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are, particularly as we head into the election season, the role that the media has in maybe bringing down some of the tone and polarization. Uh, We've already had one serious assassination attempt um, and clearly there's polarization everywhere. And do you think that the media can do a better job in unifying instead of polarizing? Thank you so much. Of, absolutely. Great question. And of course, the media can do a better job. They don't want to, <laughs> is the thing, because the, the media are not the intrepid fourth estate speaking truth to power. The media, broadly, are the propaganda arm for the liberal establishment. That, that's just what they are. I, I, I don't mean to sound edgy or conspiratorial. Or, that's just a fact. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's even really disputed anymore among most people. So that's what they do. So when they raise the temperature and they say Trump's an existential threat to the country, even after someone tried to blow his head off, they're, they're doing that intentionally. They want to raise the temperature because they want to put Kamala Harris into office. Uh, quest, let's take one written mailbag before we get to the member of Segmentum. From David. Michael, I have to say I completely disagree with your take that women should not be allowed to box. Here we go. More women's boxing questions. Uh, There aren't always men around to protect women, and women should be able to learn and practice defending themselves. Boxing is a sport. If women want to box, who are you to say no? Okay, well, hold on. Are you objecting because women practically need to be able to defend themselves against men, or are you objecting because boxing is a sport? It seems like there's a contradiction there, but I'll take them both. Uh, yes, women should be able to protect themselves, uh, especially if they're you know, ever, ever finding themselves walking down a, a dark alleyway in an unfamiliar place. I certainly want women to protect themselves. They will not protect themselves by punching a man. It won't happen. They'll protect themselves by shooting a man or maybe by using mace or bear spray or pepper spray, but, but they, won't, they will not punch their way out of an attack by a man. And it's actually... Uh, misleading and dangerous to convince them that they will. It's not going to happen. So yeah, I want women to be able to protect themselves from bad guys too. They need guns to do that. Uh, to, w- as for boxing being a sport, not as a way to protect yourself. Yeah, it's a sport. I think certain, sp- I think men and women are different. So I think certain behaviors are particular to women. Certain behaviors are particular to men. And there's some overlap, but for some things, actually some things are better left to the fellas, like catching blows to the head, and some things are better left to the women, like um, giving birth, for instance. Uh, now we have men who are attempting to give birth, and it, it does, doesn't really work. You know, they're trying to emulate it, even though it's it's uh, biologically impossible. So that that's my view. And who am I to say that? Well, I'm just a citizen with at least semi-functional faculties of reason and judgment. And, you know, I'm just a just a guy who lives in a body politic in a country that's supposedly self-governed. I don't know. That's, that's, all, that's all I am in this case. Uh, it's Fake Headline Friday. The rest of the show continues now. You don't want to miss it. Become a member. Use code Knowles, Canada, WLES, at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Republicans are Nazis. You cannot separate yourselves from the bad white people. Growing up, I never thought much about race. It never really seemed to matter that much, at least not to me. Am I racist? I would really appreciate it if you left. I'm trying to learn. I'm on this journey. If I'm going to sort this out, I need to go deeper undercover. They don't say I'm racist. Joining us now is Matt, certified DEI expert. Here's my certification. And what you're doing is you're stretching out of your whiteness. This is more for you and less for you. Is America inherently racist? The word inherent is challenging there. I want to rename the George Washington Monument to the George Floyd Monument. America is racist to its bones. So inherently. Yeah. This country is a piece of shit. White folks. White trash. White supremacy. White woman. White boy. Is there a black person around here? What's a black person right here? Does he not exist? Hi, Robin. Hi. What's your name? I'm Matt. I just had to ask who you are because you have to be careful. <laughs> Never be too careful. They gonna say you In theaters September 13th, rated PG-13.